I modded this keyboard eight different ways to make it go from this to this. Drop offered to send me their control high profile keyboard, and I thought it would be a good opportunity for a mod showcase. I've wanted a keyboard to build for my sister for a while, so this build is for her. Mod number one, replace and mod the stabilizers. The stock stabilizers on this board are truly terrible. They're lubed from the factory, but are somehow still extremely rattly. Thankfully, Drop also sent these Everglide Panda stabilizers, which are manufactured by JWK, just like Duroc plate mount stabs. To begin, I Epsi modded the ramp of these stabs using the C3 Stabilizer Soulmate kit. I then lubed the housings with Crytox 205 Grade Zero and the wires with Crytox XHT BDZ. If you're in the market for lube, I'm now partnered with a new vendor that specializes in lube and stabilizer tools, Poverty Keys. They have some of, if not the best lube prices on the market, which get even better with discount code TECHBRO for 5% off. Anyways, the difference between the stock and newly tuned stabs is pretty night and day, both in terms of sound and feel. Mod number two, switch foam. I've had these pour on switch pads from KBD fans lying around for a while. For my testing, they produce a similar effect to a full sheet of PE foam, but their effect on sound is not as potent, which I actually like for this build. They're also super finicky to apply, and I don't even want to think about how annoying it would be to remove them all. But they do have cutouts for all the pins and perky LEDs, which is handy for the control. Mod number three, case and plate foam. The stock control sounds pretty hollow. To alleviate this, I picked up some stupid fish case and plate foam, which comes in many different parts because of the unique architecture of the control case. Mod number four, tape mod. I honestly didn't think I would need the final piece of foam exodia for this build, but even with switch foam, case foam, and plate foam, the edges of the board, especially the spacebar, still sounded hollow. So, I tape modded underneath just the spacebar area. Mods number 5 and number 6. Spacebar foam. Even foam exodia wasn't enough. So, I added some adhesive neoprene foam under the spacebar keycap and some thinsulate in the gap between the plate and PCB. I did initially try using KBD fan spacebar foam, but because of the mold these drop artifact bloom keycaps use, it wouldn't fit at least without cutting it. Mod number seven, switch washers. You may have noticed that the control PCB is north facing, meaning that these cherry profile artifact bloom keycaps may cause interference in certain rows. In other words, they may collide with the switches. With these Momoka frogs, only row three was affected. So I placed some of these washers from OLKB on the R3 switches and it alleviated the interference completely. Mod number eight, switch mods. So I'm not really sure whether these would count as mods to the control, but these switches were lubed by my friend Chaotic and I did replace the spacebar switch with a box ink, spring swap to a 100 gram progressive spring to cushion the bottom out. I also had to clip the PCB mount pins in the box ink in order to fit it into the control PCB. So there you have it, eight or so mods, depending on semantics, to get the control sounding how I wanted. Overall, at $200 down from $250, I would actually say this board is worth its cost, especially if you need a board ASAP and find modding fun. But it's hard not to recommend boards like the Keychron Q3, Freebird TKL, and Maker Scarlet over this one, as they all have quality of life improvements over the control, such as south facing sockets, PCB mount stabilizer support, and softer typing feel. Here are the typing tests before and after modding.